the case of ML. Many companies are attempting to bring AI into their organization. A sub-discipline of AI that feeds on data is called machine learning. Machine learning is important because organizations have lots of unstructured and unexploited data that can be used to increase business performance. However, unlike other technologies, machine learning has to be handled with more care. I'll share some thoughts, but first hit that subscribe button and click on the bell icon to be notified of new videos on architecture and AI that I share every other week. Most businesses will and should be on a continuous transformation journey. As part of this exercise, they might kick off new initiatives that improve business performance. Some initiatives may be foundational to improve business capabilities, while others may cut across the business to improve business processes. For this video, I'll use a business process example of a company that makes and sells a physical product like beer. Let's say the scope of one of these processes include projecting sales so we can optimize everything else downstream, pricing the beer correctly for different markets, manufacturing it, stocking them in warehouses across the country for easy distribution, and distributing it to retail stores and bars where customers buy it. To maximize profitability, the company decides to use machine learning. One machine learning model will not work for the whole end-to-end -end process. So we'll have to use different machine learning models. The company decides to test the waters with sales projections. If this is done well, the rest of the operations can be optimized later with other machine learning models. A team is formed to work on this problem. The team figures that to build a good machine learning model, they'll need the following data. Data on sales history. Data on how beer is priced for different regions, customers, and size of retailers. Data on different flavors of beers that the company makes. And data on the customer demographics of customer location and their disposable income. But the data exists in different places. There is no point in consolidating all this data before we even know if this is the right data to build a model with in the first place. So the team uses an informal way to bring all this data together including accessing publicly available demographics data. They then correct the errors as much as possible, get rid of data with missing values, eliminate duplicates, and transform it into a form for machine learning models to consume and extract features from the data that's not directly usable. They then split the data into training and testing sets to feed it into different machine learning models. The choice of which model to use is done through a series of experiments, adjusting the hyperparameters of the different models considered. A good understanding of the domain, in this case beverage processes, will help to build a robust model. Various models are tested and the best performing model is picked. Through this exercise, the team realized that beer pricing does not matter for sales projections after all. After validating that the model will work, the mechanics of formally consolidating the data begins. Systems and repositories are set up. The rest of the data is then brought into the data repository every day at midnight. This fresh data is used to make continuous sales projections. Executives also want to know what data was used to make the projections, so the team has to archive the model, including the hyperparameters and the data that was used to train the models. The best model is deployed into production. Downstream though, manufacturing does not trust the machine learning based sales projection. 
So they add a 20% buffer to the number and they plan their processes accordingly. The model works in production for about three months and new sales data is also gathered. It looks like the projections were overly optimistic and a lot of beer had to be dumped. Executives blamed the machine learning models for making poor predictions. Few knew that manufacturing had added a buffer to the number, making it even worse. So the machine learning team decides to improve the model. Through more experimentation, they find out that marketing has a strong influence on sales. But the marketing department does not want to share that data. After wrangling with the internal politics, the team finally gets access to the marketing data and use it to improve their model predictions. Manufacturing decides now to use the new projections, but the double whammy of more accurate sales projections and getting rid of the 20% buffer causes other problems downstream. It so happened that manufacturing numbers were used to lease warehouse space across the country, and now a lot of that space is underutilized. This is a thin slice of how we need to think about the larger business context when introducing machine learning into the organization. The discipline of business architecture will help to understand the implications of introducing change in the organization. We want to design any business in a modular way with separation of concerns so different parts of the business can be changed independently. However, machine learning may throw a spanner into the works by a system behavior that is referred to as case. Changing anything changes everything, though it's not totally bad. If you enjoyed watching this video, please consider subscribing. Thank you.